Alright. Yeah. Alright. Now I can see. Oh, that looks pretty good. See how long it takes for everybody to get on here? Uh, gives the people a little bit of time. If you guys have any questions for me or Nick here, this is a, uh, a Q&A with uh, our warehouse supervisor, um, up and coming talent in the Dayton area for comedy. Um, he's been uh, doing right. comedy. How long have you been doing comedy now for, Nick? Uh, three and a half years. Three and a half years for comedy. So I gotta admit that when I first heard about it, because I've known him for a long time, he grew up, he kind of grew up with us. I was like, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> it's not even funny. <laughs> so, uh, but but I, I I doing this interview today to kind of give a light to, to uh, his situation and. and uh, Kind of how he got started and, and if people are out there kind of in limbo and, and i respect nick a lot and we'll get to that here in a little bit of, of, of why um so another thing i admire about nick is i remember back in 2009 i think it was we were lifting at the y he told me he was moving to california and i told him no he wasn't he wouldn't he would never uh he'd never do it he'd never have the balls to do it um but uh but he did it he saved up his money moved out to california a lot of money a lot of money. It's a lot of money to live out there. Um, San Diego, I believe it was. Yeah. So, uh, why don't you tell them a little about that? Your first stop in uh, California. Uh, um, yeah. Like Chris said, uh, I didn't even know myself if I was going to be able to do it because uh, it was a big move. But I knew and that you just graduated. I just graduated. I was only 19 at the time. I think I graduated, and then uh, you know, usually, uh, typically, I guess you would say people go to college uh, and I just worked and saved money and then moved out to California and then you would think I would go to college then but I didn't uh, but I was just out there um, just uh, I just wanted something different that's cool I, a lot of people are too uh, too afraid to do that or they got to stay in the, you know you got to do this this and this to, to get ahead and then you went a different route and, and uh, you did your thing out there then you moved back two years ago Almost three in September. Almost three years ago in September. Uh, he did a little bit of work here for us, part-time, uh, and then uh, we hired a full-time, so it's been two years. It's been almost close to two years now. Yeah, yeah. So what Nick does is he does a lot of our pitch work, really, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. But he's, he's, uh, he, no, he's good out there. He, he does a lot of our wrapping. Uh, he organizes parts, does all that stuff. So. He doesn't have any specifically good skills, you know. It's something I'm doing right now. But either do I. But he's really good at directing people, and, and he's just a good worker, and he, he's he's always on time. Uh, besides yesterday, when the truck, chair, truck chairs showed up. So, um, so yeah, basically, um, what we're trying to get, what we're trying to do is, I'm giving Nick some some show times. I want him to, I want him to um, hold on one second. Getting, getting interrupted here. Um, so we got a question from one of the audience members. Uh, have you ever worked with Carrot Top? And uh, he, he has not, but that's going to change here this year as uh, one of our friends in the business is actually friends, acquaintances with Carrot Top. So part of our deal is if we buy machines from them, they got to get an introduction with Carrot Top. Wow. And we just confirmed that that's, that uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> is going to happen probably in October. We don't have a set date yet. This is news to me. This is news to him. So yeah. he had no idea this was coming. Wow. Um, and I, for some reason, my cleaner is <laughs> watching right now while she should be cleaning the machines. <laughs> so, yeah, my cleaner is cleaning machines and watching this live. So, anyways, what I admire about Nick is, you know, he's, he may, and you know what, he's self aware. He makes fun of himself, but there's nothing really to be, be ashamed of. You know, I've gone to a couple of his shows because I didn't think the guy was funny at all. Like, I didn't think he was funny, but he was funny on, on stage. He's pretty good, honestly. He's actually really good. So, and what's what, what's good? What's cool about Nick and what caught me off guard was the maturity of, you know what? He didn't go and go get a ton of debt, go to school. He doesn't work for a, he doesn't have some job that he hates going to for bills he has to pay. He has to have an apartment or a home like everybody else or drive a brand new car. Um, so what he does is, you know what, his dream and his passion was to do comedy. Yeah. Which I, I honestly, knowing him, I didn't, I never, never thought that. But he's doing it the right way. He moved back home. California is expensive. He moved back home. He said, I'm going to try this comedy thing out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really make this a, you know, a thing. 
and he's been going at it strong here in Dayton for, since he's been home. Um, and he works here 30 some hours a week. He leaves at three o'clock. He goes straight. Uh, he, he goes. He says he goes. He goes home, but I saw him at the gym the other day. Uh, he goes. He writes his jokes and he does comedy almost how many times a week on average? Uh, about seven times a week. It's almost a nightly thing on average. And it's not like he's just going ten minutes away, um, unless he's going to Mila's Cafe. Uh, but. You know, he's going to Louisville, which is two hours from here. He's going to Cincinnati. He does shows in Toledo. He goes West over Virginia to this weekend. And Yeah, West Virginia. And this is, it, most of the stuff, this isn't paid gigs, a lot of it. I'm going three and a half hours to West Virginia this weekend for about, hopefully, $50. But the thing is, I'm getting the opportunity to work out a longer set, which is... You know, that's the whole point. You want to be on stage for as long as you can. And you want to get. You never know. You might meet that person there, or saw you on stage, or or, or or just connections, or or anything. Yeah, a lot of people are saying hi. Uh, Crom, <laughs> block of flame is on. Crom, did you have any questions for Nick? Let's see if you uh, if he asks, I'll, I'll be able to. How many? We got like a couple hundred viewers. Or Not what? like fifteen. Nice. Yeah, so look, it's all right. That's more not, than I thought. You, you, you never know who's going to show up on here, though. You know. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, but no, I just thought that was really cool that, that Nick that Nick's aware of, of his situation. He lives at home with his parents. It doesn't bother him. He's they didn't doing have to his, know that. Well, it's, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, nah, just exposure. Who cares? No, no, you, I'm you know? I talk about it on stage. It's uh, that's his dream. So he's he's sacrificing now to 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 give it a you know giving it his all, giving it a shot. So I guess what's your ultimate goal of comedy? You know, let's obviously you want to be a big and all that stuff. But is there more of a like, is there some some sort of level you you really like? Hey, I can really get to this level. That's achievable for me. Not saying you can't, you know, become big in prime time. I'm just, right. you know, coming into that. that Honestly, that I thing. I think I just want to, uh, I just want to be a respected working comic. That's it. Would you ever be open to like cruise ship comics, or is that? Something? Um, I I can at this point. Um, you know, you hear a lot. You know, being in the comedy game, you know, you hear a lot learn a lot from others that have been doing it longer than you um, and I hear I hear good things and bad things about uh, uh, cruise ship comedy uh, what are the bad things I've heard kind of like it's like a sellout type of thing uh, but at the same time I mean I, I'm not very picky at all like I said I'm going three and a half hours each way for maybe 50 bucks this weekend yeah, so you're losing money. Lose, yeah. yeah, you're losing money in, in your time. And, and Stephen, to answer your question, we're going to be doing a, uh, a drawing after this show since you watched. I'm going to go live in about two hours playing a slot. We're going to select a few people. You guys are going to play against each other for the, uh, for the $25 gift card. So just because you watch the show doesn't mean you win anything, but it just gives you the opportunity to win something. Um, so I, we always appreciate you guys watching and sharing, and we've got great fans there. And uh, so, I guess, Nick, I got a couple more questions for you. Yeah. Um, Nick, what's your favorite slot machine and who's your favorite comedian? Uh, my favorite slot machine is probably uh, the Williams. Um, He's, I don't think he knows what that is. He's been here for two years. He still doesn't <laughs> know what the machine is. I like that one. No, I uh, I think I like the, um, I don't know, I think I like the Bluebird 2s. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a classic. Uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with it. I definitely so you sell a lot of them. So sell a lot of them. I definitely, and even though uh, they're they're good machines as well, I probably like them more than the slant tops because they're ginormous and yeah. heavy. And uh, 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 favorite comedian, favorite comedian. Yeah, yeah. I forgot there was two part question. Oh, uh, that's that's kind of tough because I I get influences from a lot of people. Um, you can't go wrong with Dave Chappelle, and he's a hometown hero. Yeah, Dave Chappelle lives about 30 minutes away. from yeah. the town 30 minutes away yeah. from us. So I think Dave Chappelle. And uh, uh, just Next being funny, but still back to work at 1230. You better, he will. He's on the clock right now, so he's getting paid for this. Um, Ralph, uh, to answer your question from the other day, um, I did bid Mohegan, and I was not the winner. But uh, I heard that's a really cool... Cool uh, casino. So you should post some pictures from there and send, send them all over to the page. I'd like to see uh, the insides of that place. Uh, Wonder Woman slot. Uh, it's not really a home use slot, so we're not. It, you'll probably never see it for the home use market for a few reasons. Uh, it's expensive. It's probably seven thousand dollars, seven eight thousand uh, dollars. If you have a problem with that machine, we can't help you. I'm just being blunt. Uh, I only sell machines that we can tech support over the phone. 
um, if let's say you're in Texas, let's say you're um, in Arkansas or wherever, Virginia, I'm in Ohio, I can't send a technician to your house. So we have to be able to help you with both. So some of this newer stuff you guys are seeing in casinos is uh, a lot of, it's heavily tech involved. So if you've got a problem with the machine, it's just, it's gonna be a nightmare. So I won't sell it. Uh, I don't wanna sell you guys a problem. So um, I've got a couple personal questions for Nick. Uh, I was wondering what's your, what's your worst, most embarrassing moment on stage? Uh, like when you just felt really like, Okay, okay, I think I got one. Uh, so I run a, uh, this is not a promotion, but I run a, an open mic every Thursday night. It's actually tonight uh, at the Hookah Bazaar at 10 o'clock. Where's uh, that at? It's, uh, That's the one you're always... It's the one that I do. We do it every Thursday night. It's an open mic, and what that means is anyone can come out and sign up and try comedy. It's there to work out jokes. So can I go if I want You to? could, you could. Uh, and uh, But my worst embarrassing moment was at the Hookah Bazaar. And what happened was there was a uh, bunch of younger teenagers because it's a hookah bazaar, it's a hookah bar. So. Thanks, Chucky. Chucky said we're hot. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, what's up, Chuck? Uh, <laughs> um, Appreciate it, Chucky. Um, a bunch of younger kids came into the hookah bazaar and uh, were watching the show. And I, I host that show, so I go up, uh, I start the show off, I go up there cold. And I just start the show, and immediately, as soon as I started it, these kids just started heckling me. And like just, younger kids? And making fun of me. And I felt, I immediately shrank down into a child, and I, I literally didn't know. And what, this, to do, what to do? I didn't, I didn't know how to, what to say to them, and they pretty, they pretty much just, I mean, they were the comedy show at that point. They were tearing you up? They were tearing me up, yeah. That was, that was pretty embarrassing, and that's... Were they making fun of your hair? They didn't make fun of my hair, but they were just like, I was trying to make people laugh, and it just wasn't working, and... They were just clowning me, and uh, and that's you know, that's uh, that that could happen to any comedy show. Heck it's gonna happen. It's no, it, 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 it's and it's gonna get worse. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you're gonna get you're gonna have uh, skits or whatever the heck you guys call them. And they're not gonna go well. Right. Or, right. People aren't gonna laugh at your jokes that you know they're used to, like your sheriff one. You know. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so yeah, getting to getting tore up by just some kids at my open mic that I would, you know, that was, that was pretty embarrassing. I got off the stage and I go to my buddies who we do the, we do these, these shows all together all week long. And uh, I'm just like, dude, I didn't, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> like I felt it was yeah. bad. Uh, Gerard Barton wants to know if I'll teach him how to play slots. Well, I'd say over the course of my life, I'm a loser on slots. So I don't know if you want to learn from me, but since you live in Columbus and I live in Columbus, you know, if you ever want to go play, Maybe we could do a live episode together and then uh, talk about uh, the good old days at Hangers Ponds. So, um, so yeah, I've got a, a few more questions for Nick that I'm thinking of on the top of my head. Uh, he had no idea I was doing this today. Um, so I, I guess, Nick, what's your next move? What's your future plans in the comedy thing? Uh, yeah, are you going to do it forever? If, if, if it doesn't take... It's or from what I've seen, it's already progressed a lot. You went from doorman to Wiley's to the you're the the uh, I don't know the, the first character or whatever. I don't know the main the terminology or whatever, but you're a headliner there. Now Not a headliner. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> fine. I was trying to give you some. some props, yeah. um, but so what? What's your what's your next uh, what's your next step to it? Are, are you gonna always do it? Or are you gonna you know I'm gonna try. You know you set a goal. I'm gonna give this a, a solid four or five year run. Um, or are you just gonna be something you will disagree, or that just enjoy doing? Um, no, this is I'm. I would you would like? To, I'd like to call myself a lifer. I uh, this is I'm all my baskets are in on comedy, um, and there's no blue spots. Uh, well, yeah, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> There's no, there's no blueprint with comedy, so you don't know exactly, you know, everyone's path is different, so as long as it takes, uh, you know, there's no stopping. I don't see any, it's all my eggs. But you know what, though, like, well, that's what I was getting back to earlier, is you're happy, though. Like, you're doing what you want, you're still working to pay your bills, you put yourself in that situation where you're not over leveraged, where you've got to work tons of hours to pay for this, this, and that. So I think that's kind of the message I was trying to portray to people uh, maybe, you know, if you're unhappy, there's ways around it. Right. Cut your lifestyle back. Right. Um, and it wasn't to dig at you, it was just a different perception because sometimes, to be honest with you, that's looked down upon. You know, it is. It's just, but it's, but it's looked down upon because that's not what's acceptable in society. Right, right. Society is you go to work from nine to five, you pay your bills, you have a house, like, but 
a lot of people are unhappy. Right. You know, a lot of people really aren't happy. I, I was at a conference two weeks ago, and they were saying the number one uh, killer or the number one reason of death in the United States age under 50 is suicides. It's, it's because people aren't happy. Because people are, are working jobs they don't like to impress people and, right. and you know keep up with the tailors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy. I'm very content. Uh, I think my next step is just to keep working hard at it and just to keep getting better. Uh, you know, eventually, uh, you know, the whole point is eventually comedy is your job. Yeah, so. that's true. I got two more questions okay. for you, then we're done. Yep. Um, has there ever been a time at Slots Unlimited where you're like, fuck this place, I, I'm done? And it's all right if you have, because I've had those days too where I wanted to quit. No, I mean, honestly, no. I can't say, and I'm not doing it just because Chris is here. We keep it real. Um, this place is dope, and they... Uh, dope. It's <laughs> third dope, and uh, he, uh, they look out. They look, we look out for each other. Like we said, Chris says we know each other for a long time. So my best interest is in their business, and also they respect what I'm doing outside of here. So like, I mean, yeah, just like any job, there's times when you might get annoyed. Uh, the most, the worst part about working here is probably the fact that it's the Midwest summer, and we're in a warehouse, yeah, and it's hot as shit. That's the worst. But where we are right now is air conditioned. That, so that's the just, worst part. We could just do these interviews every day if you we want. We could, actually. Uh, Daryl will do a joke for us. Oh. <laughs> can you give us a stand-up? Can you give us a minute stand-up uh, on, on camera right now, or is it... Is it uh, uh, I'm not going to give you a minute, but uh, I wrote a one-liner uh, while I was driving from, uh, from one mic to another mic yesterday. Uh, this is okay, and uh, no one's gonna laugh because everyone's gonna, online. So yeah, uh, yeah, no one's gonna get it right now. But you can, uh, you can spill your joke. Uh, everyone's been to Florida uh, before, right? We all got family members there for some reason. Uh, Florida seems like the type of place that sells titty milk in the grocery store. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We'll do a live set with him randomly. I'll catch him off guard. I'll make him go live. And then we got we got the dogs down here. They're hanging out. So. Uh, you guys got any more? Uh, you guys got any more questions for Nick? Since he just he just told you how bad of a comment he was with his joke, <laughs> uh, you know, how, how bad it was. If you guys got any more questions or whatever, we'll stay on here for about another minute or so. I got he's got he's got shit to do out in the warehouse. Uh, but uh, let, let's see if anybody else chimes in here. You guys got anything else you want to talk about? Um, in about an hour and a half, two hours, we're gonna go live on a couple slots. I'm gonna have Sarah uh, pick three players here. Uh, we're doing a little slot tournament. The winners are going to get a $25 gift card. And I'll be going to Australia for two weeks at the end of, of August. When I get back, we're doing our March Madness of slots for the winner of a slot machine. Or if I can get it by my brother, I'm going to fly two people out to Vegas with me in October. Uh, and we're going to do a, a, a free trip to Vegas. So, um, Caritop? We'll see. I'm still working on Caritop for you. So. I don't think anybody else has any questions, so uh, I guess that's all we got for now, Nick. So we'll, we'll check in uh, next week before I leave, um, and we'll go from there. See you. See you, Chucky. Still on. <laughs>